Hi everyone, this is a video about this Sony Walkman radio cassette player that uh, is old plastic but is very rugged piece of uh, uh, cassette player that is, is capable of uh, inline remote control and then it has 32 preset radio station and mega bass and uh, this this one has a most quietest transport system that i have come across because this one is different than the other ones and i show you in some images uh, just to show you how uh, quiet it is and why it is so quiet and uh, before i forget let me just find the uh, images here uh, because I tend to forget mm -hmm. so this is it and that is the transport system and this is the radio and then PCB and this is how to put a, a belt in there and the transport system is down there and the metal parts, uh, unfortunately, all the grease that they put in there was uh, a little bit hardened and I had to strip it apart completely and wash the whole transport system uh, with uh, uh, alcohol and then put it all back in again. And uh, what is uh, so good about this that is quiet it doesn't have any plastic part dangling about here it's just those pieces of metal you know that is sliding up and down and then this one that this gear that is goes up and moves towards here and down and then goes up again move towards here and then down to just move the uh, tape and um, to assist the traveling of the tape other than that is the fast forward is all in there and it's really good anyhow this is another image remember when you open this is it's rather easy i show you uh, how to open it there is one screw here that you have to unscrew it other than that you know and some latches down here one here and one there so these two latches just to take the PCB out and then before you uh, want to open this remember there are two screws down here one here and one there after you open out those if you put a spudger in here and gently open from here there is one latch here, one latch there, one latch over here, between here, and then three latches down there. And some people, they are saying, oh, you have to take those three tabs, push those three tabs down in order to take this out, but if you on a screw these two and then as I mentioned put a spudgery in here and release from here down to here and with a little bit of persuasion it just opens up anyway it's easy and uh, another image that I wanted to show you about the inside of this was uh, the uh, let me just show you was the pressing each buttons in order to do that either you need the inline remote or you have to take this out of the facing let me see where is the facing of this this one i took it out of this back of here there is a yellow piece 
underneath here. I took it out and put it on the PCB in order to check why it doesn't function properly, why the transport system is not functioning uh, because it was chewing the tape aggressively and damages some of my tapes as well. But now everything is uh, fixed up after washing all the transport system and cleaning it up and putting it back together. This is before cleaning it up. And as you see, the color of those grease, you know, they are just dried and not really greasy anymore. Some of them, they are really bad. Anyway, and then I greased it up and this is how you put a belt on for those that they don't know. And it has just this part. This is the clutch that is coming up and going down here and going down again to engage these gears with these gears. Let me see if I can show you the gears here. You see these gears, they're going round and this one is coming and can just uh, engaging with those gears by moving up, going across and going down and then reverse of that in order to play the other side of the tape. Anyway, I don't want this video to get too long. I just wanted to show you this and then tell you about uh, negatives of this and the positives positives as i mentioned it has 32 and is rugged and uh, yeah, you know it's all plastic uh, you don't have to uh, you know be worried about damaging it or denting it and so on because if it's metal if you drop it you are gonna dent it anyway and then it takes two double a batteries uh, this is broken because of the pin on this side maybe in the future i'm going to fix it but for the time being because it is supposed to hang in there when you open it and because of the other part is broken now you have to just do it like that and push it down and it stays in place no problem so the operation is just you have menu for all the settings up up here up here and the blue screen that I hate because you cannot really see what's going on in there unless you shine a light in there. And the same goes to here. You have a menu and a set button here. That menu is just moving that bar across and coming back. The first one is mega base and then mode for auto reverse and uh, tape for tape selector and the auto volume level system, FM mode, mono or stereo. And then when you go across by pressing set, you can turn the function on and off. As you see the mega base off, on, and same goes for all of them. So select the part that you want to change and by pressing the set, you are going to change it. Anyhow, the next thing is the tuning that is uh, uh, going by a small increments up. This is fine tuning, more or less. And then if you press it, it's going to seek a station. And it's, you, know, you have to do it one by one. It doesn't have the whole seek a station for all of the uh, scale of the FM and AM. And as I mentioned, it has um, uh, 3 FM, 1 FM1, FM2, FM3, each of them has 8 presettings and then it has AM and 8 preset uh, settings for the AM, so in total 32. And then I showed you the remote control and um, you know that uh, I prefer the radio cassette player because if you get bored of your tape you can always uh, tune in to your favorite stage radio station and listen to it without getting bored and consuming a lot of battery. So radio is consuming a lot less battery than the cassette. Anyhow, and then the way it has a hold button here as well as you 
press it, it's just blinking there. And if you press any button, it's just blinking there to remind you that the hold button is on. So we turn it off. And in order to check, uh, to uh, select a preset station, the, um, you just have to find a station that you like and then press enter and then it starts blinking to uh, uh, prompt you to press uh, minus or plus in order to between uh, to select between one to eight uh, preset station and as soon as you find a preset number between one to eight you uh, press enter again and that is set and the radio looks like this and the preset stations looks like this so because of copyright reason i'm not gonna play anything and then this is fm1 fm2 fm3 and then am and then back to fm1 and as i mentioned each of them has eight preset stations and that's really it fast forward uh, rewind and then a stop auto reverse or play and the quiet uh, the quiet transport system it goes like this just listen to it that's it and it shows you that this is the forward and if you press it again it shows you reverse side is playing and you know if it's reverse rewind becoming forward and fast forward becoming rewind and if it's forward forward is forward fast forward and rewind is rewind anyhow that's really it now we have to listen to the song let's see if i can The only uh, bad, the, another bad thing about this is the beeping to prompt you that you pressed one of these switches is so loud. Uh, I don't know why in this model is like this. It is not like this in any other models, but this one is so loud. Just imagine that, you know, the volume is really low, even is down, okay? But listen, the loud beeping noise is coming and then that's it. Stop. Did you hear that? It's, it's just uh, scared the living hell out of you. And then play. And because of the same reason, I have made this speaker. Just, you know, a straightforward uh, wired connection without any Bluetooth or anything, a uh, speaker, just to avoid this beeping sound uh, for this one. And I made it a little bit funny with uh, one speaker like this and one like this, and this one was the same. I just changed it to make it a little bit funnier like this. And whole of the box of this has been uh, a scavenge from the Vio uh, Sony desktop that it was obsolete. I took it apart and uh, each of the speakers were a little bit large so I cut them and I stuck them together and I made this and in order to listen to this let's just hear a little bit of this as well. Bluetooth mode. And then, of course, it's really weak, but does the job. Of course, I could. Yeah, put a uh, amplifier, Bluetooth amplifier drive in there 
in order to make it a little bit louder but it still needed a uh, you know battery or power source so i opted for just two speakers a straightforward with the cable and then that's it anyhow this video is getting too long uh, for the item that we are uh, making a review but this item is fully uh, recommended apart from the blue screen and the loud beeping noise for the Bluetooth speakers but because in the headphone is not this loud at all anyway um, the price of this is going from 25 pounds um, not working at all some of it is really battered but this one is in, is in a good condition and, and is working and if you find one of these uh, working condition just the unit itself without the inline remote you can expect paying between 35 to 45 pounds and if it's brand new or is in box with all the remote and you know the case and the box so you can expect to pay between 60 up to 100 pounds if it's in mint condition anyway i hope you enjoyed this video until my next video take care of yourself and each other and as always have a great time